Welcome to Kyra Author Master Round with Dr. Achina Steen and she is an incredibly diverse practitioner that is going to give some amazing insights into the authoring process and in fact overall multidisciplinary success. Author of the bestseller, What If It's Not Depression? Your guide to finding answers and solutions. Both a DO, Doctor of Osteopathy, and a psychiatrist certified in functional medicine, Dr. Steen is one of the key innovators in not just functional medicine, but functional medicine that brings a psychiatric and neurological interaction into bringing people's health and well-being, particularly our mental health, to another level of understanding. I'd like to think of her as a visionary psychiatrist, particularly coming from a neuroscience background, the significance you can have from this perspective to change people's lives is incredible. And I'm so grateful to have you here. Gina, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm re I really appreciate the invitation. Oh, look, it's, it's actually exciting to have you because I really appreciate the work that you do and, and the message that you share. And so I'd love to hear, just as a starting point, a little bit about what it is that you do and, and the background that you bring uh, in, into this arena, into this you know, area of health. Well, um, right now I have a private practice in Rhode Island and uh, I have a partner and uh, we see patients uh, mostly for functional medicine and what functional medicine is getting to the root cause of the problem as opposed to the conventional treatments uh, that are offered, which is uh, medication and uh, psychotherapy. And there's some other things for more refractory problems, you know, uh, that don't go away with those two things like um, ECT, but those are much rarely used. But, um, but there's still a percentage of people who don't really respond to medications or they have side effects from medications and it becomes problematic for them. And they tend to go from doctor to doctor to doctor. And what ch tends to happen is that medications are changed or psychotherapists are changed or, you know, so, and they tend not to do well for whatever reasons, there's multiple reasons. And so what we do is we get to the root cause of the problem, try to bring the body back into balance. That's the simplest way for me to answer that question. I think, and, and what I love about the work you do, and I think you, you've identified and expressed what you do there, but it really from my understanding and in, in reading your material, um, we're talking with you before, it's the rest restoration of mind, body and spirit at times and where possible without uh, medications by uncovering the emotional side, the root cause of the emotional signs and symptoms, hence giving them the, the ability to, to reclaim power in their life and move in the direction of a more balanced, happy, harmonious life. And so you were really such a profound, um, not only visionary from a psychi psychiatric point of view, but from a mental health point of view by bringing in the functional medicine and you know, allowing, empowering people to move in the direction of reclaiming their mental health and therefore their quality of life. So I think it's a wonderful you know, testimony to the work you're doing that you've got this incredible best-selling book, um, What If It's Not Depression? Tell me, from, your, from your, that background that we've just spoken about, how does this book come about? Well, um, well, I actually practiced conventional medicine for 20 years and um, there came a point where my son actually had a, his own mental health crisis. And uh, when it, he basically was, we were in France, actually traveling in France. And um, for a variety of reasons, he, you know, he was adolescent, had a fight with his brother. And I think he was missing his friends. And then suddenly he changed uh, and it didn't make sense to me. And suddenly he was, uh, uh, had an acute depression and was suicidal and it was ready to jump off of a cliff. <laughs> uh, sorry, sorry, not off of a cliff. <laughs> it felt like a cliff, I guess. It was from a fifth story uh, of the building where we were staying at. Um, it was, could have been a cliff, I guess. <laughs> but, uh, but it was uh, terrifying for me. And we were in France traveling and my husband had been on sabbatical. And when once we got home, I did the usual conventional approach and got him to see a psychiatrist, he got on three medications, and he just was not himself. It was, he was no longer suicidal, he felt a little bit better, but he still was depressed, became very, very anxious, had a lot of sleep problems. But the thing that really made me think there's something else going on is because he suddenly couldn't read. 
And, and this is a kid who had like a photographic memory and, you know, whatever he read, he was basically able to, you know, keep in his mind much longer than most people, I think. And, um, he just couldn't, he couldn't read anymore. And we, I couldn't figure that out. And no one knew what to do or could figure that out. They said he had um, diplopia, which is double vision, but uh, it wasn't really, or that his eyes were off. But, but the question for me was, well, why? And why at the same time as all of this other stuff that was going on psychiatrically? So I started to just research on my own and try to figure out what was going on and to try to get more information. And serendipitously, I found a practice that was a functional medicine practice. And, you know, I actually was looking for two reasons, not just for helping, you know, getting help from my son, but also to get some help in understanding what I was missing with my patients. There was just, I would get them to a point and they just weren't getting better. And it's like, well, I know something's happening, but I just don't know why or what it is. And I just couldn't figure it out. So I was looking for more training at the same time. And, and I happened to find this functional medicine practice. And I asked if I could shadow um, the medical director there. And he said, yes, fortunately. And I still, to this day, thank God for that. I actually thank him in my book for that too, because my life, it, changed as a result of that and my son's life. So um, he, long story short, he was seen by him. He did a whole functional medicine workup and found all of these issues that I thought was just part of his life, like chronic constipation. He had chronic eczema and he had ultimately was found to have celiac disease. And um, he inherited one gene from me, one gene from my husband, <laughs> fortunately for him. But uh, he was able, you know, we were able to put him on a diet. And uh, he was also very nutritionally deficient. And, um, you know, so we went through this whole gut protocol and were able to get his body back into balance. And ultimately, he was able to come off the medications within a year. So um, it was a progression of things, but ultimately all the medications within, actually all the medications probably within 18 months to two years, but beginning, beginning to see changes within the first month. In fact, the eczema and the constipation that he had his whole life got better within a month. So that like was amazing to I, me. I, <laughs> I mean, that alone was amazing to me. Yeah. That's fantastic. And so you've had this incredible, you know, experience of insight and opportunity. You've seen changes in the sun. It's a, it's obviously a, a, you know, a pivot point in your own practice and therefore your own life. And you've, you then start to uncover more information and take this information into your own life and your own practice. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, once you, once you know what you know, it, you just can't turn back. I mean, you just can't. <laughs> and I mean, I tried, I actually tried to incorporate some of the things that um, into my conventional practice. At the time, I was medical director of a community mental health center. And um, I, I, you know, I already did psychotherapy. I was already uh, getting long histories. You know, I would spend a lot more time with my patients compared to my my partners there and but it was in it and I also had a staff of case managers that that were and therapists that were able to also you know glean information in order to try to put the pieces together about what was going with our patients from a biopsychosocial approach but there was still that piece missing and that was really the physiological cellular biochemical piece related to the gut microbiome and gut health that was what was missing from you know my That's approach brilliant so fast forward you do additional study you dive deep into this process you take ownership of this material and you start to redirect that knowledge that wisdom and those experiences into your practice and your practice changes and in terms of the direction that you move in and now you're you've become this you know highly sought after incredibly recognized multidisciplinary functional medicine um, doctor changing lives how does that evolve into such an important book to, to share the message well you know i i found that 
but when people, uh, when people who learn about functional medicine, they immediately try to find one, right? So they Google functional medicine practitioner near me, generally, or functional medicine psychiatrist if they're looking for someone in mental health. Um, but I found that sometimes people would search for two years even and finally find me or someone like me um, that does specifically mental health. And um, by the time I treat them, see them and treat them, uh, they're like, I wish I found you two years ago. You know, I've been suffering for so long. And so I felt like, I just felt like I had to write this book. I had to tell the story and explain to people that there is another way. It might not be the best way for you. And there's certainly going to be people who are taking medications and that's fine and good. If they work for them, great. You know, and if that's their choice, that's their choice. I don't think anybody should shame them for that or that, you know, that because there's reasons why medic, I mean, I, I still prescribe medication. I still, I still do psychotherapy. I just have more tools in my toolbox. And so there's going to be people who want to, to continue taking medications. And sometimes after doing the functional medicine approach, I might, and they haven't been on medication because there are people who are totally anti-medication after doing the functional medicine approach. And if we don't get past a certain point and they're really, their functioning is declining, I might say, you know what, you might be better off taking uh, an antidepressant to help you or, or these supplements to improve your neurotransmitter production to help you fun continue functioning until we can really have the time so that we have the time to find those root causes. You know, there's going to be certain conditions like Lyme's disease, uh, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, mold toxins, you know, toxicity, there's that take much longer to resolve. Um, so there's going to be certain conditions that are just going to take time. And if you find, if I find that their mental health is declining in the process, then they're going to need some help. And that might be psychotherapy and um, psychotropics. So I just use the entire gamut that's available to us to be able to help a person. That's, and, and, and it is such a, a profound impact that you have because of that multidisciplinary, multimodal approach and integrated approach as well. So you, you, people are coming into you, they're saying, I need the, the services you provide, the care that you deliver, I've been looking for you. And you know, the book in essence, became a calling because you need to be able to share with the community, with the public, that this information is available to them, but the solutions they're looking for can be found, the challenge they're presenting with have opportunity, you know, there's an opportunity to, to solve that problem. So was, was there an aha moment? Was there a, a moment of revelation? Like, when did the book say, when did you go, I've got to write this book? What happened in your mind? And then what was the next step after you made that decision? Uh, after I made the decision to write the book, mm. uh, the aha moment for writing the book was probably that one patient who said to me, you know, I've been searching you for you for two years. I wish I found you two years ago. And so I, I felt that if I wrote a book, it will be, it'll be available, you know, on, it's available now on Kindle, but it'll be available, you know, in bookstores at some point. It's so the more I can get the word out about what I do and what other functional medicine practitioners do, I think um, the more that people will, you know, will have this knowledge. Actually, with the, the day after my book was launched, a woman um, was feeling very hopeless, depressed, suicidal, and she read a lot of books on Kindle and she saw my book on Kindle the day it was launched bought it, read it, and called me <laughs> for a consultation. There's no way she would have been able to find me if she did not read that book because it was she was from a different state. And, uh, you know, so I was able to at least help her find someone closer to her. And, uh, you know, so the, the, just the getting the knowledge out, they don't necessarily have to see me. It's just them finding somebody who does what I do 
and there's plenty, there are plenty of practitioners that do maybe not specifically psychiatry, but, um, but functional medicine in general, um, then they're in a better place. <laughs> so if I, if my book does that for you, I'm, I'm happy. And so it was well worth it to me to write that book for that one woman, <laughs> you know, you know, if I improve one life uh, that that's worth it to me. Yeah, and it's not too far as a stretch to say that your book saves lives. And in that instance, when you particularly have these mental health challenges, that the impact that it can have on their life on, is, is profound. So the very writing of the book is a service it's, and its impact is, is far reaching beyond what we'd even know about beyond the words of the, on the page. It's the impact that it has on people's lives. Maybe people you don't even meet, but certainly those that you do give you that reinforcement that it is a, it is a commitment worth following through to completion because of the impact that it has so i love you sharing that story and i, I know the impact has been far reaching beyond that so what right. was the writing process though so you, you've gone okay i've got to help more people i've got to get this message out there people need to know that there is you know, a solution what was the writing process for you well um that was that's tough for me i actually you know what's interesting is uh i um am not a writer i, I never considered myself to be a writer and uh, i was told by a tarot card reader that i would write a book and i was like no way <laughs> that's never gonna happen <laughs> and lo and behold i've written a book but uh i actually i uh, cite her in my book as well uh, to thank her for that but um I don't know if that just put the idea in my head, but I, I don't think so. It just, because at the time I wasn't even thinking about it. So five years, fast forward five years later, I've written a book. But um, I, I, I did start working with a couple different people to sort of, um, you know, to get, get going and trying to figure out how to write a book and what to write the book about. But I didn't really move forward in, in a... Um, productive way until I joined the author incubator. It's Angela Loria's program. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with her, um, but she has a method of writing that is an absolute gem. And she was able to drill down exactly what the topic should be because there's so many different topics. And I think what many authors um, who or many people who want to write a book do is that they want to talk about everything that they do but it's it's actually more important to try to solve a problem and so uh because people who search for books are trying to solve a very specific problem and so you want to um have that title you know um to be able to sort of answer multiple questions at once in, in, a, in a phrase, you know, so that's why it's called, what if it's not depression? You know, what are the root causes? So wait a second, and it makes you think, you know? Um, but uh, she has an incredible process of, of pulling all of these gems out of you. <laughs> it's just, you know, and it's, it sort of gets you to flow. It, she puts you into this flow of thinking that made it so easy, so incredibly easy to do. And I use that same flow process that she, um, that she taught us in making videos. I mean, so I make a lot of, I have a program that uh, is a companion program for my book. And I use the same flow process in my videos as well. And, it's, and then you can actually even learn how to shift into that flow. So it's kind of cool what she teaches you. And that was the hardest part. It was the writing was actually easier. And, um, but then, you know, you write a book in nine weeks and I, I couldn't have, I, couldn't believe it when she said you'll do it in nine weeks and the writing is easy right like mind-blowing method of, of writing but nine it, it was done in nine weeks <laughs> it was <laughs> so the kindle version that's up there it's 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 edited a couple times and now it's going to be print and you know when i when i read my kindle now it's like oh my gosh all of these errors but the the thing is you have to think about it's better to get your message out 
to the public than worry mm -hmm. about grammar and mistakes. And, um, and it's written as if I'm speaking to you. I actually have had patients who've, who've read my book and, and have said to me, it's like I'm in your office. So um, they, everything that's in my book is what I do in my office basically. And so, and it, it is broken down in steps that you can follow. Um, there is probably actually more detail in my book than I would necessarily, um, you know, provide for my patients because I, you know, when I see them personally, I drill down it specifically for them. But for the average person, the book actually gives you more information than I would necessarily give to each of each and every single one of my patients. But now I actually say, you know, if you want to get a head start, because I have a, a you know, a month to two month waiting list with some people, I'll say, if you want to get a head start, you know, download my book for free and you can read it. And then you'll know what to expect by the time you see me, you know? Amazing. And that's a great, and that's a great clue, prelude into really one of the, the final questions that I want to ask is what impact has it had on your practice? So you have this incredible book. It's a, your, your reputation is, was already, you know, of a, an incredibly authoritative practitioner. And now you have the, this book, this bestseller. How has it impacted your practice? How has it influence the minds of the people coming into your practice for the message that you share? What, what's the position that the book has held for you? Well, it, in terms of my day-to-day -day practice, I mean, I think certainly has elevated my my reputation. Um, people are, are happy to see that, you know, I've written a book and um, I think it just elevates me in their minds, but it, it but the day-to-day -day stuff hasn't necessarily changed other than me, um, giving my book to them <laughs> for free but um and it's made my practice a little bit easier what it has what it has um impacted is um being seen by other people like yourself you know um and being on podcasts so i've been on podcasts almost every other maybe at least once a month and you know just having the opportunity to talk about it and to spread the good news of other ways of treating mental health issues than just medications and psychotherapy. So um, it's, it's really um, brought me uh, to, you know, into the limelight in that regard. And, and when more people like you know about my book and, you know, have these types of conversations and everyone that watches this type of show or, or, or um, interview or podcast, listening to a podcast, the more that people are become aware of this type of treatment, that it's available. Yeah, and look, that, that is a really important aspect to recognize that we can create a more far-reaching effect with our message when we actually are willing to, to put that message out there and, and to really demand from ourselves that we put the time, effort and energy into you know, clarifying our, our message, putting that into print or into into an audio book or into a podcast, so that we can share that message. And you've done incredibly with that. So thank you for all that you've done. But to bring this uh, interview to an end, and again, you've been incredibly generous with your time. So I thank you for that. I'd love yeah. just one final insight to bring this to conclusion. How do you think you have changed as a result of being a best-selling author? What have you, when you reflect on yourself, on your journey? where you have come from and where you are now in terms of the impact that you're having, how is writing a book mirrored in that entire experience for you know, the way that you now see yourself, the feedback that you get, the stories that people share when somebody rings you and says, in essence, you've saved my life. What does having written a book mean for you? Wow. Um, you know, it's meant a lot to me um, because in the book, I also talk about my relationship um, with my mother and you know in retrospect um i was able to figure out what made my mother so ill and i it was almost like going back to the beginning of my life because it you know this this functional medicine approach has resolved a, a lot of my own um physical and mental and spiritual issues um, but I was also able to figure out why my mother wasn't available to me as when I was a child. She became very, very, very sick 
um, and uh, with rheumatoid arthritis. She also had mental health problems and um, no one was really able to help her. And she basically, you know, became non-functional, uh, you know, as a mother of four. And I had to take over, basic, uh, being the oldest, <laughs> I had to take over the household and raise my, my brothers and my sister. And, um, and uh, yeah, I was able to figure out that much of what she um, went through had to do with nutritional issues um, and stress of uh, moving to this country from India and um, a, 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 a whole mountain of issues that she had to deal with that caused her to have uh, an autoimmune reaction and very, very, very severe rheumatoid arthritis and um, also had a concussion and causing her to have psychiatric issues. So um, it, it made me feel like, um, that this book was a way to uh, memorialize her, I guess, and her life and, and you know, how, how loving she was and how much she gave to us, uh, even though she wasn't able to give us what, you know, a typical mother could or should or would, you know. So, um, but in terms of me um, becoming uh, an author, I think it's just made me feel like um, in a way I've contributed to the world uh, in a way that I never imagined that I would. <laughs> and, the, and if I can do that, then I, I could probably do even more, you know, it's just, I never imagined that I would ever write a book. And, and you know, it was, I would be the last person. My husband actually laughed when I told him that I was going to write a book. <laughs> Because we've been together since we were in high school, you know, so it's uh, so he knows the type of writing that I do and how how hard it is for me to write staring at a blank piece of paper in college and just not, you know, the only the the lowest grades I ever got was from writing. So when people say that, you know, oh, I can't write. That is not true. It's just finding the right person to help you help pull your story. It really comes down to stories and pull what's really, you know, moves you, moves your heart. That's so important. And so uh, I'm glad that I was able to have that opportunity and be able to actually do that and show that it can be done. And so um, I'm happy to be, I'm happy to say that I'm an author now. I really, it's definitely changed me as a person and um yeah that's <laughs> yeah, beautiful. thank you that was a that was a wonderful share you know the, what i what i loved about that is the the recognition that yes the book impacts the health and lives of, of, of your patients and the community but it's also a healing journey for the writer as well and the potential to to gain insights that you might not not otherwise have if you don't go through the process and yeah so I want to thank you for, for your message, for, for the stories, for the book, for your time, for your contribution to not just your patients, but the community and the world through the work you do. Dr. Chen, thank, thank you so much. I appreciate you, appreciate you, appreciate you being here and sharing your message. Thank you very much. Thank you.